This is roll six, slate one. How did the Western press, the media, present the attack on the American Embassy? Up until the start of 1968, the Allies were allegedly winning the war, and the media believed that. They were shocked into the realisation that it wasn't so by the Tet Offensive early in 1968. The attack on the American Embassy by the Viet Cong in Saigon was presented as a great defeat. It led to the virtual resignation of President Johnson. At the same time as that attack, about 20,000 American Marines were trapped in Khaesan, and that became the Dien Ben Phu for the Americans. They determined that they were going to defend Khaesan, even though it wasn't all that important to them. Had uh, the fact that Americans never been defeated in the war before, did that have any, uh, any impression upon the American public, do you think? The fact that the Americans had never been defeated in a war had a great effect on the American public, I believe. They weren't prepared for the defeat by the North Vietnamese Viet Cong forces. Many still argue that they weren't defeated but they were forced to withdraw from Vietnam and from mainland Asia. And, that w the, and the Americans were forced to withdraw from Vietnam and from the mainland of Asia. And that was a defeat in anybody's terms. The Americans, uh, did the media really present the war, sorry, did the, the media really present Tet the attack on the American Embassy as being a moral victory for the Communists? Yes, they, the media at that time did a complete turnaround. Uh, they realised that uh, everything was not going so well. They presented the attack on the American Embassy as a moral defeat. I think they were right in that. But they also presented the whole offensive as a military defeat, and they were wrong in that. Why were they wrong? I mean, Ironically, uh, of course, the Viet Cong and North Vietnamese, particularly the Viet Cong, that is the southern-born guerrillas, put themselves in such a position that they were ultimately destroyed. After that, it became a North Vietnamese versus South Vietnam American war. What would have happened if the Americans had a press time their attack then? If the Americans had been in a political position to pursue the war uh, at that stage, in 1968, they may very well have won. They may very well have built up the South Vietnamese politically uh, in the same way as they did in South Korea and have built up a very strong non-communist state. But uh, American public opinion wasn't going to buy what the generals and the politicians were saying? <coughs> the American public lost confidence in their politicians. Uh, they lost confidence in the ability of the American military to win the war. They believed they'd been hoodwinked, and they had to a great extent, so that it became not viable. The Congress in America began to ask questions, and up until then, the president had made most decisions. He wasn't in a position to continue making those decisions. The Congress, America's Parliament, uh, questioned him very closely, cut aid to South Vietnam. Therefore, they'd already lost in 1968. Instead of going on to win the war as they could have militarily, they actually lost it in 1968. Give me a sentence about the American public seeing the Viet Cong inside the embassy grounds on their screens that night at TV. On TV. Well, on that opening day of the Tet Offensive in early 1968, the American public saw Do Viet Cong. Sorry. Yes, okay. Yeah. 
On the opening day of that offensive, the Viet Cong entered the grounds of the American embassy. They only just failed to enter the building themselves, but they put the embassy under siege for several hours. And the American public saw that on television within a few hours. It was an unbelievable uh, sight, brought right into the living rooms of, of uh, every American family. How close did the Viet Cong come to actually getting inside the American embassy itself? The Viet Cong came to within, I think, about an inch of getting into the American embassy. Nineteen of them assaulted the embassy, killed some of the American Marine Guards outside, blasted their way into the compound. One very heroic Viet Cong, with a satchel charge in his hand, raced to the door, the big uh, reinforced door of the embassy, which had been opened, and threw himself at the door as the American Marines inside were hastening to get it closed. He missed by about an inch. The door closed, his satchel charge smashed against it and exploded and killed him, of course, but failed to blast open the embassy building itself. The noise from the lady it's okay. Just cut that. It's cut out. Roll six, slate two. Roll six, slate two. Can you tell me about that American who was trapped in the guardhouse? One American was trapped in a guardhouse near the gate to the American Embassy, just inside the gate. He was upstairs in a bare room, and the Viet Cong didn't check upstairs. They assumed that they'd forced the American Marines inside. In fact, they were using the downstairs part, which was half open, to fire upon the American Embassy. It wasn't until daylight uh, that correspondents and uh, American troops gathered outside, putting the Viet Cong under fire, uh, saw an, um, the American at a small window which faced onto the street. It wasn't big enough to get out. They tossed a pistol up to him. Uh, he then went to the other window facing onto the American embassy and fired at the Viet Cong. Uh, he may have even killed one. But they realized he was there, and one ran across an open space to get to him. The, the uh, American security officer, I believe he was, fired his last three shots and wounded the Viet Cong, who nevertheless made it downstairs, badly wounded. Uh, the American was left upstairs, and um, he heard uh, this Viet Cong dragging himself up the stairs obviously badly wounded, but determined to get the American in the upstairs room. There's absolutely nothing in the room, nothing he could do. He waited and the door swung open, where he saw the Viet Cong very badly wounded, leaning against the doorway, trying to get his rifle up to shoot the American, who was paralyzed in the middle of the room, didn't know what to do. He came to life and threw the pistol at the VC, and then leapt at him and actually strangled him right there. Uh, but it was a very heroic act on the part of the Viet Cong. That sort of determination, that was pretty uh, much the case throughout the whole war. Yes, it was tremendous determination to overcome the people they considered foreign invaders. Can you tell me why it's difficult in a 90 second news item to be able to present everything? It's very difficult to be able to present everything in a minute or two minutes of film. You've got to concentrate on one aspect, and that's the best you can do. So, so what I tried to do was to take various aspects uh, from day to day, but the American media particularly concentrated on the war aspect and the American involvement to the exclusion of everything else, including the fighting their allies were doing, the South Vietnamese. Can you tell me briefly uh, why General Lone shot the Viet Cong suspect and whether that's forgivable? It's probably not forgivable to kill any unarmed opponent. But General Luan was the uh, police chief at the time. Uh, 
uh, an hour before he had learned that the Viet Cong had smashed their way into the police compound in Saigon and one of his best friends, I think a police colonel, and the colonel's wife and six children were killed. Of course, the colonel was killed in the course of his duty, but the children had their throats cut. They were murdered. Uh, when the VC was captured, Loan asked where he was captured. He was captured near the military, the police compound. Sorry. Uh, I think